Hello, this is Craig Perko, and I would like to talk about these guys. I've had to unfollow a lot of people who have reshared this crap, and I'd like to wave my finger at the Times for being a fucking retard. Um, I would also like to explain the basic idea of technology and society, since most people don't seem to understand it. It's really fairly basic. Here is all of humanity. Back in the dawn of time, well, not that far back, but quite some time ago, we invented farming. Shortly thereafter, basically all humans were farmers. In order to produce enough food for everyone, most everyone had to farm. Over time, however, our technology improved. These days, well, less than 5% of Americans are farmers, and this produces enough food for everyone in America. Letting aside our distribution issues, by the numbers, there is enough food for everyone. What happened to all these farmers? Well, they're still out of work today. If you go into Boston or New York, you'll find that 85% of the population is unemployed farmers. No, that's, that's obviously a lie. They went into other industries that were growing. For example, in the Middle Ages, they went into textiles. The textile industry, we're not talking about textiles as we know them today. We're talking about starting from sheep and going all the way to pillowcases using nothing but your fingers and some wooden things. Uh, this this was a hard, hard job. This was this was like farming. It was it was really rough, um, and uh, over time, we shrank the number of people. Technology grew and grew, and the number of people number of people required to provide textiles to the whole population of the area shrank. And nowadays, only a tiny portion of our population actually work at creating textiles, um, and they produce textiles that are great. Same with the farming. We have very few farmers, but the food we produce is very reliable. Textiles, the textiles we produce are very reliable. Uh, it used to be that these, you know, when 95% of the population was farmers, a drought would destroy a civilization. Uh, this sort of thing, these tiny core industries, these are super efficient nuggets. This is a very few people working extremely well, extreme, extremely reliably. And that makes them better than the whole. This is just one reason why the answer isn't, well, let's keep the number of farmers at 95%. That, that's a bad answer. The answer is to let this super efficient nugget form and then help the farmers get into other jobs and growth industries. Now, I'm not espousing any particular ideology. I haven't heard any ideologies that make a lick of sense, so um, I'm going to just talk about it in general terms. But uh, I will give more examples here. Once the textile industry became super efficient and the number of, number of people got freed up, you know what the growth industry started to become? We started to see sale making. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of history, you know how important that was. If not, it was important. We got to see things like dyeing. We got to see, I hope I'm spelling that right, we got to see whole industries, for example, washing. Um, you didn't see washing as an industry before unless you happened to own a castle or a huge manor and were one of the one percent and were basically employing slaves to wash your clothes. We didn't see washing as an industry. Now it is an industry and it's been an industry for quite some time. And of course it's been shrinking. <sighs> Let me give a particular example to absolutely highlight and cement what I'm talking about. I got into an argument about IT used to be IT was a significant cost. I mean, we're talking a massive part of any any computer-related uh, business was their IT. This has been shrinking because it's been getting cheaper and cheaper to do IT, and we're seeing businesses that specialize in it. Nowadays, you can get IT for about one-tenth the price that you could have gotten it a decade ago. All of these IT workers? Well, they're not unemployed. Well, they're not unemployed because IT is bad. They're unemployed for many reasons, if they are unemployed. Um, However, this core, this nugget, this is high-quality IT, and there are now lots of people free who are computer experts. This is bad, right? We should be, we should be keeping IT big so that these people are still employed. No. This tiny core of super-efficient IT? Well, first off, I actually expect it to get about ten times more efficient in the next decade. But even as it is now, you know the sorts of things it enables? It enables solar power monitoring. In the past, we haven't been able to do solar power monitoring very well because the amount of money you save by installing solar power and the amount of money it costs to monitor it, 
They were about the same. So now that the price of monitoring it is one-tenth what it used to be, it's becoming efficient. We're starting to see a lot of people doing solar power monitoring. It's a growing industry. Which means that more people are becoming employed. Uh, it's never going to be a huge industry, I admit, but that's not the point. The point is that we're going to see it grow, and then we're going to see it shrink, and then we'll have this core nugget of super-efficient solar power monitoring, which we can then use to do, say, smart grid development. I don't think we'll see smart grids roll out in any kind of real manner until we see solar power monitoring get cheap. But um, it could be wrong. It's kind of, it doesn't really matter. It's off the topic. What else can you do with cheap IT? How about anything related to computers? Your social networks. G plus wouldn't be possible without this cheap IT. Uh, here is uh, uh, massive DIY aka manufacturing not possible without cheap IT or without cheap computer related services such as the net, such as the internet you can build almost anything that requires a computer it has become cheap it's become one tenth the price it used to be go build it there are so many opportunities all of these things I could go on for days these are all things where you can go these are all growth industries now the question is how do we get people to go from here to here with a minimum of pain? The answer is obviously not to keep industries big and inefficient. The answer is to help people make the transition. And I don't mean the government should step in to help people. I'm not for or against that. I don't really care. I'm talking about fundamentally we see things that cause pain and things that can and things that can reduce the pain of this transition. Um, so we see things like uh, uh, reskilling is going to become real common and we can help people with this. We don't necessarily need to rely on government programs to reskill. Uh, there are a large number of, uh, of, re, uh, of education and free job help surfacing just due to people organizing because organizing has become so cheap. Uh, again, it, uh, it was a huge industry and now it's teeny tiny. So we're starting to see, and it's and largely it's been social networks that have shrunk it. So we're starting to see a lot of people forming together into tight little clusters, uh, efficiently trying to help people reskill for free or very close to free, and I think that's great. We're seeing a lot of problems with policy, where policy is getting in the way of growing industries. Law is also a big problem. All of the uh, things that I showed you on the previous page and most of the others I could show you that are built on uh, cheap IT, a, a lawyer with a patent can kill any of those. Um, it's almost impossible to keep up with legal costs once a lawyer starts to sue you. Uh, we're starting to see problems with, starting to see, pff, we see huge problems with the economy and the way that it is set up. Econo, I spelled it wrong because I'm an idiot. Economy, we're starting to see a lot of problems with how that's set up. The distribution, I'm talking about worldwide distribution of, uh, of, of this technology and this growth of industries. If China gives its solar power industry $10 billion and, uh, and we panic at the fact that someone stole a million dollars, well, that's going to be a serious problem. It's going to be make, it makes it difficult to do a growth industry here in America, and instead it's the growth industry over in China. These are all hard questions. These are all irritatingly, irritatingly deep things to talk about. They're steeped in people's political ideologies, um, and you step on landmines whenever you mention them. But these are the things that we need to talk about. Technology advancing is, is what happens, and it's not a bad thing. It forms super efficient markets, super efficient things, which give to the whole give to the whole of society. That is what civilization is at its heart. It's all of these really teeny, teeny, tiny, super efficient, super reliable services. So we get to see these these uh, uh, you know here's Google providing enough search for everyone with only 50 million people, uh, not even I'm sorry, with only 5,000 people and 15,000 lawyers working for them. This is the sort of thing we see, and this is what makes society society. It's all of these teeny tiny super efficient industries. Uh, these things aren't infallible. I'm not saying that we should let them grow on their own and whatever. They obviously can explode, as we saw with the car industries. But at its heart, this is what society is made of. Tens of thousands of tiny, tiny industries that are good enough to serve the whole population. And then, that, then there are some free people who are able to work on whatever is available and they create these growth industries which then shrink and free them up again. 
this is how it's always been, and it gets fucked up a lot by economies, by politics, by policy and law. Uh, and I can't say what the best politics and policies and economies and law are, but I can say that this is the fundamental way that technology and society have always interacted. And it's probably always going to be the way that society and technology always interact. And fighting against that is the wrong idea. Knowing that that's how it happens and trying to make the transition as painless as possible, that's what we should be focusing on. And that's the basics.